In our last lesson, we learned that we are baptized into the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is the meaning of the term, the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This wonderful union is proclaimed by the apostles consistently in Scripture. We are told that we are in God, and God is in us, that we're in Christ, and Christ is in us, and that we are in the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is in us. The benefits that accrue from this union with the Godhead is that they work their work in us, comfort us, strengthen us, and equip us to do their work upon earth and to dwell with them forever. Satan has done his best to distort the doctrine of baptism, to discredit it. The reason is because baptism is one of the most significant doctrines in Scripture, chiefly because it's associated with practical benefits that are yours in Christ Jesus. By distorting the doctrine and associating it with false concepts, Satan has actually robbed the people of God of the benefits that are theirs, rightly theirs, in Christ Jesus. Our purpose is to expound the benefits of being in Christ, of being baptized into Christ. If you receive them, it will gender confidence and assurance in your heart. You'll be able to live acceptably in this world, please God, and be acceptable in heaven recognized as one of his children, one of his working children that are participating in his kingdom enterprises. Today we want to fasten upon one other glorious truth associated with your baptism into Christ. It's found in Galatians, the third chapter, verses 27 and 28. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male or female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Prior to our coming into Christ Jesus, we were under the administration of the law of God that made us aware of sin, for by it, the scriptures say in Romans the third chapter and verse 20, by it the law of God is the knowledge of sin. It defined sin, apprised us of what sin was, how it separated from God, and thereby defiled our conscience. From the viewpoint of this third chapter of Galatians, the apostle tells us that the law was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Verse 24 of that chapter says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. The purpose of the law of God, which preceded the gospel, was to ready men for the Savior. It was never intended to be a system of salvation. In fact, the Word of God tells us that the law is not of faith. Galatians 3 and verse 12. The law does not gender faith. It does not develop a persuasion of God. It does not promote confidence and trust in God. You might put it this way, rules, even divine rules, cannot bring a person to rely implicitly upon God. It cannot make God plain to his heart. It cannot give him access to the living God. The law is not of faith. It's contrary to faith. The Word of God even tells us that it inhibits faith, deters a person from believing and trusting in the living God. Galatians, the third chapter, and verse 23, makes this statement. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up under the faith which should afterward be revealed. That is to say, as long as we were living under the regime of rules and regulations, do's and don'ts, divine do's and don'ts, if you please, we were shut up, kept back from the faith that should afterward be revealed. Our lives were not characterized and could not be characterized by implicit reliance upon the Lord. But now, praise the Lord, that we are in Christ Jesus, faith has come. And the Word of God announces in Galatians 3.24 that now that faith is come, now that we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, now that we are apprised of His goodness toward us and have obeyed the gospel, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. That is to say, we are not being brought to Christ. We are in Christ, and we praise His name for this. God is not directing us from without by a set of rules. He now is directing you from within. God dwells within you. 
by faith, and because you have been baptized into Christ. Now our association with God is one of faith, one of conviction, persuasion, reliance, and trust, not one of personal achievement. Now this takes us out of ourselves and causes us to rest and have confidence in another. It anchors us in the external realities of God, not in our own personal achievements. Now the glorious benefit of this is you can recover yourself from the snare of the devil by faith, but you will never be able to recover yourself by keeping laws and regulations. You must have confidence that God has put away your sin in Christ Jesus, that you have been baptized into Christ, thereby procuring the benefit of forgiveness of sins. And when you do sin, and God forbid that you do, the word of the Lord commands us, sin not. But when you do, because of your infirmity, you must come to God in full assurance that he will be faithful and just to forgive you your sins as you confess them and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. This was not possible under the law, but it is, praise God, under Christ Jesus into whom you have been baptized. Now we are children of God by faith. That's a statement of Galatians 3 and verse 26. We are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. And the initial expression of your faith was your baptism. That was the first thrust of inward faith. The first act that proceeded from your persuasion that what the gospel proclaimed that Christ was di died, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day for your justification, that he bore in his body on the tree your sins, that he was made to be sin for you, that you might be made the righteousness of God in him. When you were persuaded of that and convinced of that, the first response of your faith was your baptism. Now the Lord Jesus Christ associated that with salvation. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Children of God by faith. Faith expressed itself initially or at the first by your baptism. You were baptized into Christ where all the benefits and all the blessings are. You obeyed from the heart the form of the doctrine and thereby procured the benefit of remission of sins, the gift of the Holy Spirit, fellowship with God, all because you came into Christ where the benefits are. Your response to the gospel was recognized by God. Oh, that I had the tongue of a silver-tongued orator and the ability to persuade you that have been baptized into Christ, that if you played no games with God when you were baptized, God played no games with you. If you were serious with him when you were baptized into Christ, he was serious with you. He took away your sin, brought you into fellowship with God and Christ and the Holy Spirit, and made available to you the treasures of wisdom and knowledge and all the spiritual blessings that are hid with Christ Jesus in the heavenly places. God is serious when he says you're his son in Christ Jesus. Now there are significant associations made with your baptism in the Christ, and you ought not to doubt it. We want to persuade you to believe God. I remember that time when the Apostle Paul was on a ship tossed in the ocean, and the sailors were afraid, and the Apostle said, Sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God. Now I admonish you to be of good cheer and to believe God in these things that we're going to proclaim to you. This is the truth. It's not far off from you. It's accessible to you. If you've, if you've been baptized into Christ, and I trust you have, if you have not, then arise and be baptized and wash away your sins calling upon the name of the Lord.